What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this video is all about catching you up to speed on Volkswagen's fully electric four-door hatchback called the ID3. On May 8th, 2019, VW officially launched the pre-booking process for the what they're calling ID3, their first fully electric four-door sedan and along with that they announced some interesting specs about the car and I want to catch you all up to speed just in case you have not seen that to date. First and foremost they introduced that they will be offering three battery sizes for the ID3. The 45 kilowatt hour, 58 kilowatt hour, and 77 kilowatt hour battery packs. They say that the 45 kilowatt hour pack will come in a 330 kilometer or 205 mile range and that's based off of the overly optimistic WLTP range. The 58 kilowatt hour pack will come in a 420 kilometer or 261 mile range and the 77 kilowatt hour pack will come in a 550 kilometer or 342 mile range. But as stated, the WLTP tends to be a little bit overly optimistic. And so what I anticipate the EPA range coming in at for these battery packs is 164 mile, 209 and 274 miles. If you've been following my channel over the last several weeks, you know I've been talking a lot about battery technology and more specifically Tesla's significant competitive advantage over their competitors. And when I got to looking at the comparison between the Model 3 and the ID3, which I think that they will be direct competitors in terms of size, the differences between the two cars for range is remarkable. When you stack up the two side by side, you do see this Delta very clearly. And though the two companies aren't making identical battery sizes, you do get a sense for that difference because they are close enough. Of course, that lower end, or let's call it the standard range ID3 comes in at 45 kilowatt hours, an expected EPA range of 164 miles. The Tesla Model 3 standard range, which is a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack software downgraded, gets 220 miles. The standard range plus, which is a true 50 kilowatt hour pack, comes in at 240 miles. And the mid-range VW ID3 comes in at 58 kilowatt hours, and that's 209 miles. The interesting thing that you see here is that the standard range plus Model 3 at 240 miles is more efficient or more energy dense than the mid-range ID3 at 58 kilowatt hours. And the long range Model 3 with a 75 kilowatt hour pack comes in at 310 miles and the 78 kilowatt hour pack for the ID3 or the long range uh, quote unquote ID3 comes in at 274 miles. This is really becoming a trend with Tesla's competitors across the board. Though the battery packs are larger, the range just does not compete. There's a couple of theories as to why that is the case. Some might take a little bit more of a conservative approach and say that Com competition is software downgrading or limiting the access to that full battery pack to allow for a higher charge rate and to protect the actual battery pack. Others, and this is probably more in the camp that I'm leaning towards, I don't see that Tesla's competition has as good of battery tech. I bring this up in this video about Volkswagen because for many, many people, range is king, and they're going to look at what is the maximum range that a car can get, especially since electric vehicles still don't quite hit parity with gasoline vehicles in terms of how far you can travel on a single charge versus a single tank of gas. Charge rate for the ID3, they said at this event, will come in at 100 kilowatts and will come with one year of free charging with those participating charging networks, including Ionity. That's going to be a cap of 2,000 kilowatt hours, so you can't just go gangbusters in that entire year. You do eventually reach a threshold, which probably most 
people leveraging this free charging won't hit that cap. They also said at this event that the ID3 will come capable with over the air software updates so that Volkswagen from the manufacturer can push out updates and make sure the car is current. But in that same breath, they also said that some updates will require you to go into the dealership. And this makes a lot of sense since manufacturers have to make sure that franchises are happy and bringing customers and owners into the dealerships is a key part of making sure those franchises are happy. Production will begin at the end of this year, 2019, with max production ramp of 100,000 units over a running year. So that tells me that they won't get to full production capacity by the end of 2019, and likely it will be 2020 by the time that they see that 100,000 unit per year run rate. They did add that the production site where they will be producing the ID3 has a capacity, a full capacity of 300,000 units. They did say that the facility where they will be producing the ID3 has a full production rate of 300,000 units, but my impression is, is that that will be across a collective amount of electric vehicles they intend on producing. They did say that the production facility will be fully carbon neutral. They didn't go into the details of how they will be executing on that, but my guess is it will be a mixture of renewable energies at the facility as well as carbon credits. The starting price will be under 30,000 euro beginning in 2020 and will have a 30% less total cost of ownership over a gasoline or diesel variant. And this is interesting to me that they're starting to communicate what electric vehicle owners now already know, which is it's far less maintenance to drive an electric vehicle and therefore far less that will break, which could potentially create an interesting predicament for manufacturers going fully forward with electric vehicles and the franchise dealerships that they also have to answer to. They will be offering a first edition of the ID3, which they are currently taking pre-bookings for, for 1,000 euro, and it comes with some extra special bells and whistles that the standard versions will not. It will come in one battery size, a 58 kilowatt hour battery pack, and it will have three trims. The first edition will have voice control and standard navigation. The first plus will have IQ lights and bicolor interior and exterior lights. The first max will also have augmented heads up display. That pre-booking fee of 1,000 euro is fully refundable and will have a starting price point below 40,000 euro with a limitation of 30,000 units. Pre-booking will be handled by VW, the manufacturer, but the delivery will take place at dealerships across the globe. They did say that they will prioritize markets first in Europe, then China, and last in the United States. And last, I'll just cover some miscellaneous tidbits that I think might be interesting and valuable to those watching this video. The battery will have an eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty with a guaranteed full state of charge of 70%. They also said that they are verbally committing to use less cobalt over the years. They didn't state how much their initial battery cells will include, but it's good to see that they're at least thinking about how to reduce that. And to me, this really has much more to do with where the global market is for technology of battery cells than anything that Volkswagen is doing on their own. They said that they are investing into recycling facilities where they will be able to take those raw materials from those battery cells and use them for other purposes. And they did specifically mention during this event being able to use the batteries for home purposes. So home energy storage is the impression that I got when they stated that. It's interesting to me that they're already talking about what happens after the cells cannot be used in vehicles. And they specifically mentioned this home battery storage thing. So I'm very encouraged to see that they're already talking about how to get maximum life out of these battery cells. And the last point that I'll mention that I thought was noteworthy is that they said that these cars will come standard with level three 
autonomy. They didn't say any more than that, but it will have some, some minor capabilities of self-driving. Overall, I'm actually really excited about this vehicle. I think that the size of the vehicle being a compact four-door sedan will work extremely well in some of these other markets outside of the United States. I think it will do extremely well in Europe and particularly Norway, where we already know that the, the e-Golf is a very popular vehicle. I think this car will also sell extremely well in China. And even though the size of the vehicle may not be a preference for most Americans, I think the price point will be very appealing for a lot of people as this will be a sub $40,000 vehicle. And at the moment, there's just not a lot of options. There's maybe a couple of handfuls as of today. And so by the time this car hits the market in the US or North America, um, it could be a larger choice of options, but I think more options is better sub $40,000. So I really think that this car is going to do great. I think it's gonna sell very well. I think the design of it, from what we can tell, is a good looking car. There's one other thing that I forgot to mention that I really think is important to add to this video, and that's the fact that a couple of weeks ago, I believe just before they did this announcement, that they announced something else, something really important, and that's that VW is investing a billion dollars into building their own Gigafactory. They'll be partnering together with a company called North Volt, and it's based out of Sweden. So essentially, it's very similar to the relationship that Tesla and Panasonic has. It's a battery cell supplier and an automotive company partnering together to build battery cells. And the reason why I think this is important because this implies a really, really huge intent in building electric vehicles. If you're going to invest the money into making your own battery cells in partnership with a cell supplier, there's a good case for being incredibly serious. And really, you know, what company would invest a billion dollars into building battery cells if they didn't have serious intent for making electric vehicles. So I'm incredibly excited, even despite VW's past with Dieselgate, the fact that they're investing money into building battery cells, they, they could easily just buy battery cells from a supplier, but they've chosen to make the capital investment into their own facility in Europe to make their own battery cells. So I really wanna commend VW for this. To me, I think that this will become a normal thing for automakers who, are serious about electric vehicles. Those that are not, I think this is a good sort of line in the sand. If you're really serious, you've got to get serious about, about the production of one of the most important things in an electric vehicle, the battery cells. What are your thoughts about the ID3? Do you like it? Would you consider buying it? I'd love to hear in the comments down below. And along with that comment, please tell me what country or continent that you live on so I can get an idea about who is interested and where. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thanks so much for tossing some cash my way. I know that not everyone can do that. So if you like this video and you'd like to support me, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and please share out the video that gets more eyeballs on this content that I spent a lot of time on. Thank you again, and I'll see everyone on the next video.